Come on, bless his name, bless his name. Amen. You may be seated in the sanctuary. We will fight and we will win. We always win. We always win. No matter what may come my way, we always win. 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 No matter what may come my way, we always win. This tremendous spirit of joy, this tremendous spirit of peace, speak to us even in this hour. In Jesus' name, amen. Ah, bless his name. I've been working through my summer series with you called Before the Manifestation which has been a series of sermons talking about what we have to deal with, what we must do before we get what it is that we know God has promised us. And so this is the sixth iteration of this message. So those of you who've been following me, we're in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Read in your hearing earlier were verses 48 through 51 just for those who have not heard them or weren't paying attention, 1 Samuel 17, 48 through 51. So it was when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David, that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and struck, struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword and drew it out of his sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. The word of God for the people of God. Bless be God. Really interested in the fact that a lot of times people want to win battles, but they don't want to get in fights.
they want to make money, but they don't want to do work. It's like they think something's going to happen automatically. My son yesterday brought, uh, brought home a little video, and he was showing it to my wife and I of a boxer who was in the ring. And you could hear the announcer t telling that the guy in the ring with him was one of those really fierce fighters to the point that he was trying to warn everybody, pay attention to the fight. This guy is known for taking out his enemies real quick. The guy is standing there, and I promise you, the brother that is standing across from him, he looks like he kills people for fun. <laughs> it, the look on his face is like, you can either come over here and let me kill you now, or you can let me come over there and kill you, but either way, you're about to die. The other boxer is sitting there in the ring, looking at him, and just all of a sudden, as the bell rings, the other boxer stands up, gets out of the ring, and walks down the aisle saying, that's it. <laughs> no mas, that's it, I'm, I'm done, I'm done. Now, I'm laughing, Benjamin's laughing, but my wife's response was the one that what caught my attention. Because she said, doesn't he have to fight at least a little bit <laughs> in order to get paid? If he at least fought a little bit, he could get paid? And I was laughing because I said, that's right. He forfeits everything by not even getting in the fight. And what you have to realize is that sometimes if you want to be successful, if you want the things that come on the other end of the battle, you have to be willing to get in the fight. You can't sit on the sideline and expect life to come to you. You can't sit on the sideline and expect things to happen for you. You've got to be willing to get in the fight. And if you look at the text closely, David shows us some things that are going to help us, and I promise you I won't be long. I know what time it is. <laughs> but David shows us something. Here is Goliath. He's tall. He's looking mean. He's got armor on. And David takes one look at him. And instead of cowering, David teaches us a lesson, that you always have to be fearless in your approach. I don't care what the situation is, you've got to be fearless. David looks at this situation, he could run, he could give up, but instead he is totally fearless. Let's get it on. I know you're bigger than me. I know you've got weapons that I don't have. I know that you look stronger, but I'm not scared. And some of us have to get an I'm not scared attitude. The enemy has bluffed you out of enough good stuff. The enemy has bluffed you out of enough blessings. He's bluffed you out of enough classes and told you you can't pass that anyway, so don't even take that course. He's bluffed you out of enough opportunities and even trying to get certain jobs. You need to stop letting the enemy bluff you and say, we're going to go and get in this battle. I'm going to get in this fight. I'm getting in that class. I'm getting in that boardroom. I'm getting in that office because I am fearfully and wonderfully made, and God doesn't make any junk, so I'm going to fearlessly step into this battle. It's important that he is fearless in his approach. He's got a lot of reasons he can back up. He's got a lot of reasons to run. He's got a lot of reasons to just throw his hands up. But instead, he is fearless. Now, you got to remember this now. You, you look at him. He is small. Goliath is big. Goliath has armor. He has none. Goliath has a sword. He's got a staff. Matter of fact, Goliath is making fun of him for what he's bringing. Goliath looks at him and says, am I a dog that you'd bring a stick out for me? Is Goliath talking about it? You coming up here with a rock? 
ready to fight me? Do you know who I am? Did you come with this kind of ammunition against me? He's talking to him. Let me tell you something. The only reason somebody sells wolf tickets is because they're not ready to fight the wolf. You see, you be worried when someone doesn't talk junk. It's not the one talking all the junk. You watch the one that doesn't say anything. You watch the one that ain't saying jack because that person there is probably already plotting and already scheming how to take you out. The one selling the wolf tickets, they're just out there for show. Most of the time, they're hoping the bluff will keep them out the battle. But you've got to realize, devil, you're not going to bluff me today. You're not going to talk me out of the blessing God has for me. You have to come with something other than calling me out of my name. You can curse me. You can talk about me. You can criticize me. You can call me everything. But a child of God, but the one thing you can't do is you can't control me. I determine who I am. He's fearless in his approach, but, but not only is he fearless in his approach, he's, he, he's faithful in his attack. He faithfully attacks. See, one of the things that's interesting to me is when Goliath stands up, David doesn't wait and look at him. David attacks. Now, see, some of y'all didn't get that. Or see, sometimes you sitting back instead of getting at it. You got that procrastination button you keep hitting. It's right next to the snooze button that keeps making you go back to sleep. And every time you're supposed to do something, instead of going after it with all of your strength and tenacity and sargacity, with everything about you, you go back to sleep. You act like you're not in this thing for a fight. But at some point, you've got to be willing to attack your problems. Take your stuff head on. You, you can't hide. Oh, yeah. I'm scared to know. I, 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 uh, Christina, my, my, my baby girl, she got me into this Dr. Pimple Popper. I'm going to tell you now, if you got a queasy stomach, don't watch the system. Because Dr. Pimple Popper will pop a pimple you didn't want to see popped. But what always gets me is, a person will see a knot come up. They'll see it. It's been this big. They come back a few months later and it's that big. Now, as far as I'm concerned, you've already waited too long. But you talking about you don't waited five years? Because you were afraid of what the doctor was going to say? And that when they come back now, what was that big and then that big has now a grapefruit on the side of their neck and they can't even turn. And I'm looking like, what happened that made you think it was okay not to see a doctor for five years when you couldn't even turn to the side? Fear will make you stop doing what you know you must do in order to survive. Fear will keep you and stop you from taking care of business. What David do is, I ain't got time to be waiting around here. I'm not waiting for you to get ready, set, go. We in a fight, you knew this was gonna be a fight, let's get it on. I done said what I'm gonna say now. It's about to go down, I got nothing to say to you. We getting it on. I watched old Dr. Pimple Popper one day. <laughs> Lady had this thing on the back of her neck. She cut it open and start pulling stuff out. Pounds of stuff. Y'all, 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 y'all going somewhere with this? What could have been neutralized small has now become big 
And now I'm worried about your nerves, and I'm worried about your arm, I'm worried about your hand, I'm worried about what's going to happen to the rest of your neural system. What could have been handled early has now become a problem. And Satan said, let me help somebody in here. You've got to realize some stuff in life cannot be put off. You've got to attack some things. Don't put the bills over on the side. You got to handle your bills. Don't act like it didn't happen. Let me tell you something. The shut off notice was not an April Fool's joke. You got to go handle the situation. Attack. David goes after him. And he faithfully, I, I use the word faithful. And uh, I want to use that word multiple ways. Because he's faithful to God, but he's doing it in faith. Are you following me? Because he's, he's about to fight by faith. Because the just shall live by what? He's about to fight by faith. It is not that he thinks that he's bigger, stronger. It is that he knows that God is greater. <laughs> Preach what I'm trying to. When you know that God is greater, your deficiencies do not deplete the demand on your life to trust God. Whatever your deficient is, God can make up because his strength is greater than your strength and he will be with you even in and through the battle. Okay. David reaches, you know, he, he had already got the five stones, threw just five stones in a box, threw them in a sling, you know. Now he walking around, he got a sling, he got, he got a little, little man purse on him, five rocks, he got a stick in one hand, and he getting ready to go fight this seven, eight foot giant. And he's on the attack. But he's not just on the attack because he knows that it's time now to fight aggressively. Don't just fight, but fight aggressively. What do you mean, Reverend? This is important here. Because see, some of us, not all, but some of us, we will do just enough to get by. We do the bare minimum to get by. We will keep treading water instead of going in like we want to be in the fight. And sometimes you can't be around there playing with a situation. you got to handle your business. Sometimes you got to get aggressive with it. you got to go ahead and go after it like your life depends on it because in truth your life does. Sometimes you got to be aggressive. I know, I know, I know, I know. You think it's okay, your marriage is going to be okay. If you don't fight for your marriage like you really want it, then you're going to allow your marriage to die right in front of you. You've got to fight for it like it matters because there are certain situations you can't simply hope will work out. You have to make them work out. You've got to work on them. You've got to go after it and act like it matters. The trick of the enemy is to make you think that it's all going to work out. She'll get over it. It'll be better tomorrow. All she needs is a good night's sleep. He'll get over it. It'll be better. No, it won't. It ain't. You know, uh, one thing about being empty nesters, and you know, my wife and I are, unless the kids come home to visit, we use it. Just the two of us there. One thing about uh, being empty nest is you learn some lessons you didn't realize before. See, now, if something is laying on the floor, I can't blame the children. I can't, I can't even blame her grand dog, Luke Basil. I can't blame him. He ain't at the house. There ain't but one or two people there. And since I'm the only one that doesn't do a lot of cleaning, it was probably me. <laughs> and guess what? Unless I wait 
and hope that she going to pick it up. It ain't going to move unless I get it. Now, I want to help y'all here. This is good right here. This is good stuff right here. I'm preaching today. I'm preaching today. Oh, yeah, bah, bah, bah. Listen. If it's anywhere else in the house other than my office, I don't have to worry because she's going to jump on it. But if it's in my office, she doesn't know if I put it there intentionally because I had a habit when I graded a lot of papers, I would lay the papers on the floor because if I had three papers from individuals and I had 30 folk in the class, I would just my habit of putting papers on the floor. So she got used to not touching what was on the floor. Are y'all listening to me? In other words, if I don't go pick it up, it ain't gonna move. Y'all ain't got this thing yet. There's some stuff in your life that ain't going to get fixed until you get off your rusted, dusty, get on down there and pick it up and make it happen. Quit waiting on somebody else. You have to be proactive. <sighs> I, 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 I'm almost out of time. I, I got the signal. The signal will come. I got to stop. So let me, let me hurry. Let me hurry. Let me hurry. Last thing. Last thing. This is it. I got to finish this last point for today. You got to have this one to take home. You got to have this one. The Bible says, David took one of them smooth stones. Now, a stone in my hand ain't going to do so much. I promise you now, I'll hurt you because I'm strong. But it ain't going to do but so much because my accuracy may not be so good. Nolan Ryan, I am not. Listen. Great baseball player. Forget it. Never mind. It went, went over your head. Okay. So, anybody else with a sling and a rock probably ain't going to do too good. Because you got to sling this thing from your hand up to where he is, through the trajectory line, Find his forehead and hope it get in there. <laughs> now watch this. Come here. I'm, 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 I'm going to finish this, but, but two things about this I have to get to you. He got to fight it, and he got to go into a valley in order to have his fight. Y'all check the location. Don't be afraid of dealing with your valley situations because on the other side, is the victory. Look at somebody, tell them no valley, no victory. Okay, okay. He slings it. He hits him. And this brings me to my last point. He finished it absolutely. I got to leave you with this one. The Bible says that when he hits him, he runs up to him. He gets to him. He looks at him and realizes that he started a good thing, but he didn't finish it yet. So he took the sword out of his own sheath, and then he raised it up and cut his head off. I'll finish this next week. I promise I'm going to finish it real soon. But let me, let me just, just listen, 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 listen. That seems so mean. That's just cruel. Capital punishment? Watch this. This man cursed the name of the Lord. And anyone that curses the name of the Lord, the Bible says, should be stoned to death. The fact that David hit him with a stone is biblical because he should have been stoned to death for cursing the name of the Lord. And the enemy of the Lord needs to have his head cut off. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Bishop, why, why do we cut his head off? Well, I, Tim Tebow used to coach here, and now he's coaching Washington Mystics. 
Yesterday they had it mic'd up on the game, and uh, they came out the third quarter against L.A. This is the WNBA. They came out in the third quarter, started the third quarter. They were leading big. And he told his team, he said, right here, I want you to take their hope. That was his words. That's what he said. He said, right now, start the third quarter, take their hope. If they were thinking they could come back on you, take their hope. If they thought they could beat you in this battle, take their hope. Hope. We ain't waiting till the fourth quarter. Right here at the third quarter, we gonna take their hope. When David chopped off Goliath's head, he took the hope of every Philistine and said, how you like me now? Your giant is dead and my God is yet alive. Y'all didn't get that yet? Look at somebody now, say, neighbor, God wants to raise your hope so that you know in the end, you win. Come on, praise him.